In those days, the camera couldn't lie. The camera was a scientific instrument, and so if you produced a photograph of a fairy, it had to be right. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 antiques roadshow items that left us speechless. Well, I'm supposed to say now it's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly isn't no. for sale. Well, that's I'm the just a custodian. I know. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at the most surprising, weird and wonderful items brought on to Antiques Roadshow. Let us know in the comments what treasure you've got knocking around in your loft. Number 10. Worthless Sapphire the show went to Halifax in 2019, and one of the guests was a woman who had brought on a sapphire brooch she'd been told numerous times was a worthless piece of costume jewellery. This is a real first time for me. She said she was actually refused proper valuations from people who couldn't verify whether it was genuine. Thankfully, she'd come to the real experts, and John Benjamin not only verified its authenticity, but praised the huge sapphire that was right there and apparently went ignored for years. It was over a century old, and not only was the sapphire real, so were the diamonds, giving it a valuation of up to 50,000 pounds. I don't want to swear. Are you all right? <laughs> swear! <laughs> Blooming egg. <laughs> Blooming egg indeed. We can't believe nobody else realized it was the genuine article. Number nine, Cottingley Fairies. These photos have been famous for years. They were taken after the First World War by two sisters living in Cottingley, West Yorkshire, and earned a particularly famous fan, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes. They came back with the camera and said, we can prove their affairs. And these were accepted at the time, weren't they? Despite Doyle's standing as a doctor and a man of reason, he did have a long belief in the occult and supernatural. In the 1980s, the sisters finally came clean about how they did the hoax, but the photos remain an interesting artifact, which is why we couldn't believe it when they showed up on Antiques Roadshow in 2009. And then Sir Arthur Conan Doyle gave one camera to Elsie and one camera to Francis. And sent them off to do it again, in effect. Yes, with lots of plates. Even the two women who brought the pictures on said they believed in the photos themselves for a good time. Number 8. Great Train Monopoly It's a very important board because it forms part of history. In 1963, a gang of more than a dozen men infiltrated a Royal Mail train and made off with £2.6 million in banknotes the biggest robbery in history at the time. They made off with the cash and holed up at a nearby farm, biding their time playing a friendly game of Monopoly using their ill-gotten gains. The um, money which we have on display was also treated for fingerprints. And um, on this particular one here, we've got uh, fingerprints from one of the train robbers. Leaving the monopoly set behind, the fingerprints it held became major evidence in convicting these robbers. Then in 2013, it showed up in an episode of Antiques Roadshow after being displayed in the Thames Valley Police Museum for a while. It was only valued at £200, conveniently the same amount of cash you get for pass and go. Perhaps it's one to two hundred pounds of someone's money, but would it be right for people to profit from crime? I don't think so. Number 7. Richard Dad Painting Troubled painter Richard Dad lived in the 19th century and was committed to infamous institutions Bedlam Hospital and Broadmoor. I would hope that some indications, I mean, it would be too much to hope, really, that this was a lost painting by Richard Dad. Though the conditions in both of these hospitals were appalling in the Victorian era, Dad was able to complete many famous paintings during his time in them. One of these paintings, called The Artist's Halt in the Desert, was brought onto Antiques Roadshow in 1986 by a couple who thought it was completely worthless and just wanted to know what it was. It is an international treasure, we're a lost picture, and I feel that it could possibly um, make somewhat over £100,000. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine their shock when its origins were revealed. It really was a lost dad watercolour that was eventually sold to the British Museum for £100,000. Number 6. Hair of the Dog 
I've not seen it before. I'm going to see it with you for the first time. Look away if you're squeamish. This grisly item was unveiled by Fiona Bruce at the end of a 2018 episode after it had been given to her in a suitcase. But no, this wasn't some kind of twisted ransom note, it was a valuable item. Supposedly, the dog was a vital member of the constabulary and caught the last man to be hanged in Leicester. It's not nice. That's still a gruesome origin for an equally gruesome item, and many viewers took issue with the dog, or rather its head, being featured with absolutely no warning. It's not the sort of thing you expect to see on a Sunday evening. Why couldn't they taxidermy the entire dog instead of just its head, and make it, you know, a little less horrible? Number 5. Fabergé Flower It's a solid block of what is apparently glass, but it's certainly not. It's stone. It's rock crystal. Yeah. Possibly the most valuable item ever seen on Antiques Roadshow, it was brought on by a squadron of the British Army in 2018. The flowers are made of enamelled silver and tiny silver stamens, but in the centre there's a dewdrop of diamond glinting in, in the sunshine here. This ornament was made by the world-renowned House of Fabergé, a Russian jeweler most famous for creating the opulent Fabergé eggs for the Russian Imperial Dynasty. But eggs weren't the only thing Fabergé made, as it also created this artificial flower, which was gifted to the squadron in the year 1900 when Queen Victoria was still on the throne. I find Fabergé things on the Antiques Roadshow, but nothing of this scale. Expert Jeffrey Munn was stunned to see such an impressive item on the show, and handed it a landmark valuation of a million pounds. In my opinion, that this is worth a million pounds. Really? Wow. <laughs> Goodness wow. Of course, the squadron isn't looking to sell the flower anytime soon. Number 4. Queen Victoria's Cakes she lived for decades and was famously an enormous fan of all things sweet, especially cakes, and she had plenty of them made during her long lifetime. I am absolutely staggered because we've got bits of fruitcake here that are 120, 30, 40, 50 years old. <laughs> so imagine the surprise to see a 100-year-old chest containing pieces of various Victorian cakes. The woman who brought them on said her mother had a friend who had connections in Windsor Castle and was able to take the slices, all of which were hand-labeled with the date, occasion, and in the same handwriting, meaning they were deemed authentic. Do you know, it's possibly one of the most difficult things I've ever tried to value on an Antiques Roadshow. They were generally fruitcakes, and chief among them was Queen Vic's 80th birthday cake. Number 3. Angel of the North Statue Love it or hate it, the Angel of the North is one of the country's most famous statues, and this scale model of it is miraculously worth as much as a century-old Fabergé flower. Indeed, it were an angel, uh, an angel or a group of angels, who heralded the birth of Christ, using something that has a deep resonance in our culture. The reason the statue is so valuable is that it was created out of bronze as a proof of concept to show what the finished Angel of the North would look like, something called a maquette. Shockingly, this wasn't the most valuable Angel of the North maquette out there. In 2008 and 2011, two other sculptures were sold for £2.3 million and £3.4 million respectively. On the basis that this is half the size, I would comfortably value it at a million pounds. Amazing. Not bad, considering the actual statue only cost £800,000 to build in the first place. Number 2. Painting by William Auburn This is not that. This is something better. Wow. So I'm, I'm all excited now. <laughs> well, the thing is... Learning that your prized 20th century painting is a fake certainly wouldn't be good news for everyone, unless, of course, that fake is actually a copy of the painting done by the original painter himself. Since the roadshow, I've been able to show it to open experts, and there's absolutely no doubt in their mind that they thought instinctively, intuitively, that this was by open. It's amazing. That was the case with this open painting. The Spy, also known as The Refugee, which Rupert Maas pointed out was already on display in the Imperial War Museum. It took some investigation, but Maas did say that he believed in the painting's authenticity. Ultimately, the show was correct. It was a genuine work by Auburn, and it got a massive valuation of £250,000. I've got to revise your valuation. 
uh, it's worth at least a quarter of a million pounds. Oh my god. <laughs> Number one, Seychelles Sea Coconuts. Upon seeing this bizarre item get unveiled in 2020, viewers were quick to point out that it looked like something else – an enormous bum. It's actually a seed commonly known as a coco de mer, which does literally mean sea coconuts, and it only comes from two Seychellian islands. And yes, even ones that aren't as rigorously polished as this one do look distinctly like a person's backside. It was valued at between £1,000 and £1,500, which isn't bad for something that literally grows on a tree. Though Seychelles is currently trying to save the endangered palm trees that produce the sea coconuts. Funny looking as they are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.